Liverpool are champions of England for the first time in 30 years. Jordan Henderson became the first Liverpool captain ever to get his hands on the Premier League trophy. Champions again! I stood up, I screamed and cheered, and I saw my neighbour a couple of days later and he said, I heard you cheer across the road when the final whistle went. <laughs> Liverpool finished the campaign with 99 points securing a title, a record-breaking seven games before the end of the season. There's a togetherness with the team. They all believe and understand what Liverpool Football Club's about. In the end, the gap to second place and last season's champions, Manchester City, was 18 points. I think that's when we first bought a penthouse apartment in Guardiola's head. But the Reds' path to glory has been far from smooth. I think Liverpool fans deserve a lot of credit there as well because they were patient. If you're successful, I sucked off Europe. They take your players. The difference we had to make was to become from sub-top to top. So how did Jürgen Klopp take Liverpool back to the top? <laughs> Heading off on their pre-season tour of the USA in the summer of 2018, Liverpool were wondering when, or indeed if, their time would come. They had just lost in the final of the Champions League to Real Madrid in Kiev. For Jürgen Klopp, it was a sick defeat in seven major finals, but by the time his team touched down stateside, there was a renewed optimism around the camp. There was a new number one in the shape of Alisson Becker, while another Brazilian, midfielder Fabinho, was brought in from Monaco. Also that summer, the Reds made another key signing, with Pep Linders returning to the club as assistant manager. Kiev felt like... A great ride and a great sort of unexpected adventure, if you, if you know what I mean. But mm -hmm. did you sense that when you came back into the club that they, they had already made a step on from even when you left? Yeah, the belief, for sure. We created in that first preseason was so positive. I think what improved a lot was the trust between the playing group and the staff. But what we really had to learn, principally with the, the personality of Jurgen, but they have now installed inside them that they see each next game as the next final. That winning mentality was a characteristic Jürgen Klopp had been working on since arriving at Liverpool in October 2015. In a special Liverpool way, we can be successful. But we can wait for it, of course. But we, I don't want to say we have to wait the next 20 years and I'm sitting here again. I, I know when I'm sitting here in four years, I think we won one title in this time. It was almost like signing a world-class player because he was a world-class manager. He had the passion on the sideline and you could see the connection he had with the supporters. I don't have the words to even talk about that man anymore. He's just an extraordinary... He is a Shankly of the modern era. So I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe, if you want this. <laughs> Brendan Rodgers is a great manager, but I think Jürgen Klopp was made for Liverpool almost. We can absolutely speak about him in the terms of not from the amount of trophies he's won, how he's turned the club around. All the people told me so much about the British press and so on, so it's up to you to show me that they're all liars. If somebody has an interesting question, it would you're, be really gonna, nice. Are you going to play against Paris tomorrow? He was immediately making people laugh. He was immediately, his first press conference, people were laughing. It's a very erotic voice, by the way, the translator. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Again, like please. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, Ella. If I take you back, I mean, we moved back to when Jürgen first came to the club. You were obviously quite new into the first team set up at that point. Can you remember your first sort of meeting with Jürgen and what, what, what it was like and what you sort of what your impressions were of him? First of all, I I was really happy that we got uh, a coach with similar ideas. It sounds ridiculous, of course, but I was really happy that we got a coach who really wanted to go forward in everything, yeah. <laughs> without the ball with, and everything. I think he was really, really happy that he signed. 2018 was a busy time all round, even for me. In March, I left my job at the Liverpool Echo after nearly eight years, joining Goal as Liverpool correspondent. Later in the year, the Echo got my replacement, lifelong Red Kiever O'Neill, joining the sports team. His ideologies, his, his passion for the city and, and the club, and 
you know, his open letter in the Liverpool Echo, I think, just pretty much sent that message. You know, he wrote to the people of Liverpool and I think I've, I filled up a little bit reading it, to be honest, just because it was such a special for our paper to have him, you know, penning a little, uh, a little message and it was, you know, what other manager thinks to do that? Anyone who has ever pulled on that famous red shirt knows the history behind it and the expectation which comes with it. Neil Mellor spent seven years as a Liverpool player, playing his part in the club's 2005 Champions League triumph. So how would he have liked to have played under a manager like Jürgen Klopp? One of the reasons is you look at Jürgen and he's... We mentioned that he was likeable at Dortmund, wasn't he? But it, you just want a big hug off him. Do you know, when, you, when, when you've won a game, you've scored, you want a big hug and he'll deliver that hug. And it's, it's that warmth that he brings the whole, the whole place, the whole football club, which is something unique, it's special. Have you met, met him in, as in, in sort of social situation or yeah. anything like that? What's he like? Yeah, just genuine. Yeah, yeah. You know, such a genuine person. It's not a, some managers have a big ego around him. He'll have a beer. He'll it, it, shake your hand, he'll talk to you, he'll have time for people. I remember my dad think, saying there was one manager like that, Jack Charlton, was like, he didn't care what anybody thought. Yeah. It, it was, listen, this is who I am, you either like it or you don't. It wasn't all plain sailing for Klopp. In his first half season, Liverpool finished eighth in the Premier League, losing painfully in the finals of both the League Cup and the Europa League. First of all, we need to use the experience because I'm sure we will be again in a final. We will be have again decisive moments. There are more bigger problems in life, but in this moment, to be honest, it doesn't feel like this. It's really hard. When you follow Liverpool all your life, you get your fair share of highs and lows. Actor and comedian Neil Fitzmaurice would certainly attest to that. He was at Hillsborough on that fateful day in 1989 and remains an Anfield season ticket holder. There's always been that wonderful kind of feeling with a, a synergy between a crowd and, and a football club that very few have. And I just think with Klopp, we have high expectations of the club and we've got a massive history. I think when he's walked into Liverpool and, and, he's, and he's, he's spent a little bit of time here and he's got to realise what he's in for. But I think the beauty of it with Klopp is that's exactly what he wanted, I think. He needed Liverpool as much as we needed him, I think. I think he needed to find this kind of, and, and it's a unique to Liverpool, I think. They're still young, the players' first big final, unfortunately the second final of the season. We will use this, it means we have time to train. We will use it, we will use it, and we will come back stronger, that's, that's for sure. I was at all of those finals that we lost, and maybe I was a jinx to the team, but I, I, I'm a believer that once you keep getting to that point, you will get across that line. Radio presenter Jonathan Joseph, best known as DJ Spoonie, is renowned for being one of the godfathers of UK garage music and has followed his beloved Reds all over the world. We started brilliantly, I think players got a little bit tired, it was maybe a little bit warm, conditioning. And then you look at the squad that we have, you look at the players that, that started that game and you say, did we even deserve to be in a European final? I think we were overachieving, so that needed to be managed. They were a talented side, but an inconsistent one. Slowly and surely, the progress came. A good quality game takes time. It's it's like this because you're not um, you're not limiting players. You try to let them express themselves at the same time that there are rules and principles that are to create a common idea with a group of players. What the most important things is faith and patience and luckily uh, our owners had that at that time because they saw what was happening on the training ground and what was happening in that season. They finished fourth in each of Klopp's first two full campaigns, reaching the Champions League final in 2018. They were ready to challenge. Well, I don't think we need extra motivation for tomorrow. You know, everybody's ready and everybody's looking forward to it. You want to give everything that we have? I'm here because my boys gave me that chance again and um, I'm really proud of them already and now let's play football. For me uh, the arm is there, it's like wrestling a little bit. I was unlucky then that Mo fall on his shoulder. Obviously no one's blaming Loris but those mistakes did cost you deal. When we all do it together we lose and win together and uh, unfortunately we lost. We all feel really really bad and the way home will not be the best trip we ever had in our life. Everyone uh, tried to cheer me up but um, uh, there was just um, 
silence everywhere. We promise that we will come back next year even stronger. Did you always think it was in those players or were you, you know, have you had to teach them those ways and that, that intensity and that? Yeah. Do... Example, many people say that we change style, but that's not true in my point of view. My, the essence always stays the same. And if you go two years back, so what, what did we really want to improve? So one was set pieces. We really want to improve. We want to create them, use them and make them decisive. Two throw-ins. We really think this is an important part of the game where we can create and where we can stop the opposition from creating. Three, our build-up. Better with the ball, playing, because teams will drop more. They're going to set up to really uh, annoy us to uh, try to stop our way of play. We want to stay longer on the opposition half, so stop counter-attacks better. Where do we want to improve now? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Klopp knew that in order to deliver on his promise to turn Liverpool from doubters to believers, he would need to recruit well and to spend wisely. He quickly set about overhauling the Red squad. One of the first players to join his revolution was Sadio Mane, who signed from Southampton in the summer of 2016. I think he's got better and better. There was one year when he went to African Cup of Nations and Philip Coutinho was injured for a yeah, while season, and we missed, I, I felt we missed Mane more than we missed Coutinho. I felt Mane was, and that God, that's something because you know Coutinho was playing a different level of football at that time. Maybe it was that hat trick that he got against us for Southampton. Yeah. Where he said, "Listen, yeah. we need to have this man on our team." <laughs> the fact that when you look at Chelsea, you look at Man City, even Man United, the fact the spending power they've had compared to Liverpool, but he's bought world record transfer fees and in two key areas. I've got the best centre half in world football in Virgil Van Dijk. His calmness, his professionality, his love for clean sheets. He is a winner in each vein of his body. Then obviously you've got Fabinho as well and I think that was an important sort of signing in terms of getting that spine from the goalkeeper to Van Dijk to the midfield. Fabio is a real positional player. So he plays the six as a, how we said it before, as a lighthouse. He guides. The way he wins the ball is, is really important. And he's our best midfielder in stopping counter-attacks. We talk about those final defeats. You could probably define them with individual errors. You don't get that with Alisson Becker. Absolutely. And I think when you look at when you look at the fact that those two cost us 130 million, but then the other three cost us eight, suddenly it, we've got them on a cheap. <laughs> we spent 130 yeah. million pounds. You know, when I look back, Pepperina at the time was brilliant for us. Going further back, Ray Clements was unbelievable. Just really calm, not flashy. You know, strikers and forwards win matches, but defences win titles. You will not find a more professional and a more humble person as Alisson. We walked out Arsenal, it's unbelievable. And we were standing in the dressing room, me and Jürgen standing in front of the team before the team went out of the dressing room. And we said the things we had to say in the dressing room, blah, blah, blah. And I hear him say to all the team, guys, no, arrog no arrogance here. We have to be humble. When we have to run, we run. When we have to be together, we are together. And I hear it like in my right ear. And I look at Jürgen like I turn and... Because it went then here, you know? The, the fact how he said that we have to be humble. Bit by bit, Liverpool began to take shape under Klopp with Reds fans treated to some unforgettable evenings when vision and execution combined to produce the incredible. The night against Dortmund, we were dead, we were dead and buried at 3-1, you're thinking, oh, I've got no chance. But then we attacked the cop and we all know what happens on those special nights. When City came to Anfield and they'd just been destroyed, they'd been flattened and everything, and we terrified them. I think that's when yeah. we first bought a penthouse apartment in Guardiola's head. And we've lived there rent free ever since. Klopp's vision was starting to be realised. On the day when everybody plays at its best, imagine. I'm normally running up to the stadium because I'm always a little bit late. There's always a bit of traffic or something happened at Lime Street Station. If we beat Barca, we need our best players playing. To go to Anfield that night, I was also looking forward to just seeing Messi a little bit. If we beat Barca, they're going to score. How, how do you stop Messi? In the semi-final of the Champions League against Barcelona, Liverpool looked dead and buried. They trailed 3-0 from the first leg at Camp Nou and needed to score four unanswered goals and keep the great Lionel Messi quiet. 
once we scored early on, the players that I can see into their eyes, the Barcelona players, they were shook. Thinking back to the, the corner, you didn't know what had happened. And then obviously just bedlam them, wasn't it? Just crazy, everyone everywhere, people five rows down and you know, you're hugging strangers and when the whistle did, did blow. And um, Imagine's playing, I think, was the last song they played. And, you know, to see, you know, all the Liverpool players there and everyone singing, and I've got goosebumps thinking of it now. And so, after one of the greatest comebacks in Champions League history and one of Anfield's greatest ever nights, Liverpool marched on to the final in Madrid, where they would beat Tottenham to lift their sixth European Cup. I was so happy in Madrid for Jurgen, even though the players delighted for, but I thought he's such a great manager that he doesn't deserve this whole uh, he can't win a final um, stick that he was being beaten with, you know. So winning that gave the group the real belief that the next prize is there as well. The difference is if you're successful as sub-top Europe, they take your players. And the difference we had to make in the last years was to become from sub-top to top. And we felt that that confidence after the Champions League final to keep the group like how it was and go with this group into the next season. Is, is there a particular moment or performance that you particularly take away and think that was every Leicester. Leicester on Boxing Day, yeah? Because the World Cup, you go to a different culture, winning that a cup we never won before and straight after with still a jet lag, going to Leicester who was second. Yeah and don't give them a sniff. The players were on it. Probably one of the best performances from, from Trent as a right back. He got two assists that day, he got himself a goal, and that was like, wow, this right fullback has just, has just put in a performance that was as good a performance as you'll see in the Premier League this season. Absolutely destroyed Leicester. Leicester weren't even close to Liverpool that day. I think the, the one game where you sort of knew, I think we've done it now, was the Man United game. And then obviously Salah gets that goal at the end, which just seals in. I think, yeah, I think, think this is it now. Over the next seven weeks, Liverpool stretched their 16-point lead over Man City to 25. Then the coronavirus lockdown brought an unprecedented halt to the season, with the Reds just two wins away from their first title in 30 years. But you're like the first day you went back into Melwood. Then I remember seeing Jürgen, and he looked like it was the first. I think he said it was the first day back at school after the after the summer break. Were you were you just so happy to be back on that grass and you know shouting your instructions? And I had I had six weeks to prepare sessions. <laughs> we were over the moon to be back. Really cautious, and you feel that you okay. This is a first small step to that we can compete again. You only have to win two games. <laughs> It's two games in the Premier League, guys. Football was back, but not as we knew it. And after a drab 0-0 draw with Everton in the Merseyside derby, attention turned to a virtually deserted Anfield. Hello. So this is the new normal. Eerily quiet in the streets around Anfield. No fans allowed inside the stadium. A limited number of journalists allowed inside the stadium. Liverpool can move 23 points clear of Manchester City with a win over Crystal Palace this evening and put one hand on the Premier League trophy. I said to the boys, I want to see actually the best behind closed doors football ever. Liverpool, after a disappointing result against Everton, really turned on the style. Well, that was all pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Liverpool 4, Crystal Palace 0. They moved 23 points clear at the top of the Premier League table. They will be crowned champions tomorrow evening if Manchester City fail to beat Chelsea down at Stamford Bridge. The night, the night. What are you like watching a game that's so important but you're not involved in? Yeah, um, it was probably the most intense game I saw. I wanted nil nil. There's no way I wanted to cheer Chelsea scoring a goal. It's just not in my makeup. It's not in Liverpool fans' makeup. Pulisic scores, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, former Dortmund player, maybe, you know, this is time, this is happening. Did you see Dejan Lovren's tweet at half time then? I mean, your timeline on Twitter is completely going nuts. And then there's just this Dejan Lovren post, and everyone's like, Dejan, no, not today. De Bruyne scores the free kick. You're thinking, oh, they're going to win this. Sterling hits the post. You're thinking, we're going to have to wait. We're going to have to win it ourselves. 
it's mad because no one's really talking about how brilliant Chelsea were. And then when that incident happened, I, I just grabbed my kid and I went, that's a pen. Yeah! I, I stood up, I screamed and cheered, and I saw my neighbour a couple of days later and he said, I heard you cheer across the road when the final whistle went. <laughs> then I started getting really emotional then. And my mate was missing, I, I, I've got a, a mate, Paul McNance, who I've been going to game with for years, he's been like my football buddy. And he wasn't there, and I was like a bit gutted, but I was with my family and that. And then it got to 90, which I, mar I remarked to my wife, went to 90 plus six, and the 96 didn't get me again. And then I just see this car pull up, 93 minutes on the clock, and my mate jumped out, and I was, it just sort of completed the cycle for me. It was a lovely moment. You didn't, didn't know he was coming? I had no like, clue yeah, he was coming. Yeah, he lives in now. Kirby, and he was watching it at home, and he must, he, when he came, he said, I had to be with you for it. It was a lovely gesture. I mean, so how about this? We were crowned Premier League champions on my actual birthday. It was my 50th birthday, the 25th of June. I'll never ever forget it. Greatest birthday gift that anyone could ever get. Jordan Henderson finally ended the club's 30 year wait for a league title in a presentation on the cop by Sir Kenny Dalglish. Champions again, Liverpool. It feels like Liverpool, it feels like our football club, whether you're a fan, whether you work there, whether you play, it feels like our football club, which is something really, really special that we have. These are great times uh, and we, we may have to wait a long time before we experience this again. It, they are great times. Since the last championship win, which is 30 years ago, this is the greatest team that Liverpool have had and it's, uh, it's a joy to watch. Success seems to be so transient, doesn't it? We've done it, yeah, we've done it. Now, what are we going to do next? What you? Yeah. And my thing and I was just, let's just enjoy it. Just let's just squeeze every ounce of emotion, of pride, of, of enjoyment out of what this team has done. European Super Cup, um, Club World Cup, and now the Premier League is absolutely exceptional. 99 points after, after having 97 last year, absolutely exceptional. Being a Liverpool fan over these past couple of seasons have been, you know, the, the best the best days and nights of my life. Um, watching them because the results have been so good, and you know, we they weren't always this good. We have to say. This group of players is really exceptional, and will be remembered forever. That's good. But now uh, we have two weeks off, and then we we still have to write a couple of more chapters of this of the book of this team.